Hello, my name is Jennifer Seabrook Scott, and I would like to welcome you to today's topic, which is tricky terminology. We are going to decode food label claims that we see on our food packages. So we have a few goals today, and our goals for our participants in this course, or in this class, is to have a basic understanding of common food label claims, be able to identify unregulated claims, as well as understand the significance of third-party certifications. Third-party certification means that an independent organization has reviewed the manufacturing process of the product and has confirmed that it complies with their specific requirements. So, do you ever come across products like this one where you're, when you're grocery shopping? Do you feel overwhelmed and confused by all the different label claims? What do all these claims mean? And do they actually affect the nutritional composition, taste, safety, or quality of the product? Today, we are going to review some of these terms and more. The term local is undefined and unregulated. It is expected to mean the food was produced within 250 miles of where the consumer lives or sold directly from the farmer to the retailer. So if purchasing items local to support local farmers is important to you, you might want to talk to your retailer to find out exactly where your food is coming from. The term fresh. Fresh indicates that the food has not been frozen or subjected to any form of preservation, except for refrigeration. Frozen fresh indicates that the food was quickly frozen while still fresh. For example, the food had been recently harvested when frozen. Foods may still be labeled fresh even with the addition of approved waxes or coatings, post-harvest use of approved pesticides, application of a mild chlorine or acid wash on produce, or treatment of raw foods with ionizing radiation, not exceeding the maximum dose. For those of you who do not know what ionizing radiation is, it is a technology that improves the safety and extends the shelf life of foods by reducing or eliminating microorganisms and insects. The claim pure is regulated by the USDA on beef and poultry. Poultry claim can only be used when the poultry contains no added ingredients. When it comes to beef, the claim can only be used when partially defatted chopped beef or finely textured beef are added. There is no universally accepted definition, but generally pure should only be used to describe a single ingredient food that is free from contamination by similar foods. Generally speaking, compound foods should not be labeled pure, but it is acceptable to describe them as made with pure ingredients. The term natural. The USDA regulates the use of the word natural on meats, poultry, and eggs. The FDA has guidelines for use of the natural claim, but it doesn't actually verify that standards are being met. Currently, there's no universally accepted definition of natural, but it's expected to mean that a food is minimally processed and free from color additives, regardless of their source and also of, natural, of artificial ingredients. On meat, poultry, and egg products, the USDA requires that the label explains the meaning of the term natural. For example, the label would say minimally processed or no added coloring and or no artificial ingredients. This does not explicitly address food production, processing, or manufacturing methods, such as the use of pesticides, antibiotics, GMOs, thermal technologies, pasteurization, or irradiation. The natural claim is not an indicator of the nutritional adequacy of a food. 
The FDA tests artificial color additives to ensure they meet requirements for composition and purity. So this is regulated by the FDA. All artificial colors have special names consisting of a color and a number such as yellow number six. Artificial colors are man-made and they are derived primarily from petroleum and coal sources. When it comes to natural and artificial flavors, um, natural flavors are complex mixtures of chemicals derived from natural sources, such as plants and plant materials, fruits and vegetables, herbs and spices, meat, poultry, and fish, eggs and dairy products. Artificial flavors are synthesized from one from other chemicals rather than being extracted from a natural source, such as the list I just cited to you. Natural and artificial flavors must be, must be disclosed on the ingredient statement and on the front panel of the packaging. The front panel will display artificially flavored or naturally flavored. Current research shows no significant difference in the safety or nutritional content of natural and artificial flavors. Non-GMO. So the USDA and FDA provide guidelines for non-GMO claims and require that labeling be truthful and not misleading, but they do not actually verify that standards are being met. You want to look for the non-GMO project verification, which holds producers to strict standards. We're going to take a deeper dive into the concept of non-GMO. The term non-GMO is expected to mean that the products or its ingredients are not genetically modified. Specifically, the non-GMO product requires that meat animals consume a non-GMO diet starting at birth, but the feed of nursing mothers is not evaluated. When it comes to poultry, it requires that poultry consume a non-GMO diet starting on the second day after hatching. When it comes to dairy animals and laying hens, they consume a non-GMO diet starting 30 days prior to initial verification and continuously thereafter. GMO stands for genetically modified organism, which indicates that an organism's genetic material has been changed through biotechnology in a way that does not occur naturally by multiplication and or recombination. It is done to isolate beneficial traits such as insect and disease resistance, drought and herbicide tolerance, enhanced nutritional content. The FDA, USDA, and EPA have all determined that genetically modified foods currently being processed are safe and identical in nutritional composition to non-GMA foods. The claim that something is pesticide free has no standard definition but expected to mean that no pesticide residues are present on or in the food. It does not guarantee that the food was produced without the use of pesticides. That being said, the government does, does have strict standards for pesticide residue on foods. The EPA regulates the amount of each pesticide that may remain in and on foods by setting a maximum re residue limit. The FDA and USDA both test food for compliance. The FDA tests produce grown in or imported to the United States. The USDA tests meat and milk but report tolerance violations to the FDA. Foods found to have a residue level above the set tolerance will be subject to seizure by the government. The claim of raised without antibiotics indicates that the animal was raised without the use of antibiotics. This means animals can't be given antibiotics in their feed or water or by injection. 
Milk from cows treated with antibiotics can never be sold. So dairy products should never display the no antibiotics claim. The FDA tests every truck of milk that arrives for processing to ensure it does not contain any antibiotic residue. If you see this, this label, it's important to know that hormones are never allowed in raising pork, poultry, or veal. No hormones claim cannot be displayed on packaging unless immediately followed by federal regulations prohibit the use of hormones in poultry or, or veal. So hormones are allowed in raising cattle, so this, claimer, this disclaimer is actually not applicable. The no artificial growth hormones. Current research shows that milk from cows not treated with growth hormones is not safer or of higher quality compared to milk from cows that were treated. To avoid misleading consumers, the FDA requires producers to add a disclaimer indicating that there is no significant difference between milk from RBST treated and untreated cows. Cage-free. This claim is regulated by the USDA, but it does not guarantee that birds were allowed access to the outdoors. Instead, birds typically raised in large flocks in indoor houses must be in a cage-free system that allows hens to exhibit natural behaviors and have enrichments such as a scratching area, perches, or nests and room for the birds to move around and 24 hour access to food and water. The cage-free claim is only significant on eggs. Birds raised for slaughter are never raised in cages, so a cage-free claim on poultry adds no value. However, most laying hens are continually confined to cages, so a cage-free claim on eggs is much more meaningful. The free range claim on poultry is regulated by the USDA. It indicates that birds had access to the outdoors for an unspecified amount of time each day, but it does not guarantee that they actually went outside. In fact, five minutes of open air access each day is considered an adequate amount of time. There are no requirements for the size of the outdoor area or the type of ground cover. The outdoor area may be fenced and covered with netting-like material. It's important to know that the free-range claim on beef and eggs is unregulated and there is no standard definition of the term. Pasture, pasture this claim is undefined and unregulated. It's expected to mean that animals were raised primarily outdoors on pastures or with access to pasture, not continuously confined indoors. This claim on beef and dairy products does not guarantee that the cows were 100% grass fed. They may have been given a, a grain supplement at some point in time. This claim, grass-fed, is undefined and unregulated. In January of 2016, the USDA withdrew their grass-fed marketing claim standard. It's expected to mean that cattle received most, not necessarily all, of their post-weaning nutrition from grass and forage. Many grass-fed cattle are grain-finished. They spend the last four to six months of their lives and feedlots eating a grain-based diet. Grass finished. This term is not regulated by the USDA. You want to look for an independent third-party certification such as American Grass-Fed or Certified Grass-Fed by AGW. AGW stands for A Greener World. 
it's expected to mean that cattle received all of their post weaning nutrition from grass and forage. The term sustainable agriculture is defined by the USDA as an integrated system of plant and animal production practices that is capable of meeting society's needs in the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. When you see the claim organic, you should know that it restricts the use of GMOs, ionizing radiation, and synthetic and artificial materials. However, even with this claim on the label, some non-organic and non-agricultural substances are allowed. From a non-organic standpoint, an example of that would be fish oil or celery powder. From a non-agricultural standpoint, an example of that would be citric acid or baking soda. There are times when synthetic substances may be allowed in certain circumstances, such as when there is no organic alternative or when other strategies and practices fail to control pests and diseases. In reality, there are more than 45 synthetic pesticides allowed in organic farming. Organic meat, poultry, eggs, and dairy products come from animals that are fed a 100% certified organic diet, raised in conditions that allow their natural behavior such as grazing, and they have been given no antibiotics or growth hormones, although they may have been vaccinated against common diseases. Even with these strict standards, current research shows no significant difference in the safety, quality, or nutritional composition of organic and conventionally produced foods. The term organic is defined and regulated by the USDA. Farmers and businesses must adhere to USDA standards if they want to label products as organic. A government approved certifier must inspect the farm to ensure standards are met. Organic production emphasizes the use of renewable resources and the conservation of soil and water to enhance and sustain the environment for future generations. Let's take a look at the many ways the term organic can be used on foods. So 100% organic means that the ingredients are 100% organic. There are no GMOs. All ingredients comply with the national list. It has the, or it's allowed to have the USDA seal and certification is required. If the label just says organic, then that means that 95% of the, of the ingredients are organic. There are no GMOs. There are uh, non-organic ingredients comply with the national list. They are allowed to have the USDA seal and certification is required. If the label says made with organic, then that means that at least 70% of the ingredients are organic. There are no GMOs. Um, Non-organic ingredients comply with the national list, but it is not allowed to have the USDA seal, but certification is required. And if it says it has organic ingredients, <laughs> then that means that less than 70% of the ingredients are organic. It can contain GMOs. They are not necessarily in compliance with the national list. Uh, they are not allowed to have the USDA seal in that package, and there is no certification required. Rainforest Alliance certified indicates that the farm is adhering to the Rainforest Alliance sustainable agricultural standard, which is built on the principles of sustainable farming. Um, so it's sustainable cattle production, if it's applicable, uh, biodiversity and natural resource conservation, 
effective planning and farm management systems, and improved livelihoods and human well-being. So certified farms are audited regularly to verify that they are complying with the standards comprehensive requirements, which require continual improvement on the journey to sustainable agriculture. Fair trade. So a product can be certified by Fair Trade or Fair Trade International. This indicates that one or more ingredient is a product or one or 100% of a single ingredient product were produced and traded according to fair trade's rigorous social, environmental, and economic standards. The fair trade movement addresses the injustices of conventional trade by requiring better pay, decent working conditions, and fair terms of trade for farmers and farm workers. Sustainable seafood. So, sustainable seafood is generally used on wild caught fish while responsibly raised or responsibly farmed are only used on farm raised fish. This is regulated by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration to ensure compliance to, to marine resource laws. They use vessel monitoring systems and place enforcement officers on all U.S. coasts and inland riverways. Seafood Watch defines sustainable seafood as seafood from sources, whether, whether fished or farmed, that can maintain or increase production without jeopardizing the structure and function of affected ecosystems. So you want to look for third-party verification, verifications, such as MSC Certified Sustainable Seafood for Wild Caught Fish, ASC, Certified Farm Responsibly for Farm Raised Fish or, um, or Best Agriculture Practices, BAP, Certified for Farm Raised Fish. So farm raised and wild caught fish are usually raised in tanks, man-made pods, or net pins in natural bodies of water. Wild caught fish are caught in natural bodies of water, such as your uh, oceans, lakes, and rivers. Uh, there may be differences in the taste and nutritional composition of wild caught and farm raised. Farm raised fish may be higher in fatty and omega 3 fatty acids. So, if you're looking at this picture, which one? do you think is the farm-raised salmon? So the darker meat on the left is actually wild-caught and the lighter meat on the right is farm-raised. What you can notice or what you will notice is that the farm-raised fish has thicker streaks of fat. Dolphin safe. So, the clean dolphin safe means that it is regulated by the NOAA fisheries. This is certified by the tuna tracking and verification program, and it is found exclusively on tuna products. And it indicates that tuna was caught without harassing, chasing, netting, killing, or seriously injuring dolphins. Okay, so now we are going to uh, Play a little game to see uh, if you can spot the claims on products. So this product has two claims on them. Do you know what they are? You can pause this video and take a moment. This product has two claims which are natural flavors and artificial flavors. Notice that some products may be made with both. This product has seven claims that we discussed today. Take a minute to pause the video and write down what you think all seven are. These seven claims are fresh, organic, no pesticides, no antibiotics, no added hormones, no GMOs, and pasture raised. This next product has two claims. Pause the video and write them down. 
the two claims are sustainable. Notice that it was certified by MSC and also wild caught. This next item has one claim. Pause the video. Cage free is the claim. Notice that the fine print says contains at least 50% cage free eggs. Okay, so this item has four claims that we discussed today. Pause the video and write them down. So those four claims are natural. On this product, natural indicates that it is minimally processed and doesn't contain any artificial ingredients. Then there's grass-fed, no added hormones, and no added antibiotics. This product has four claims. Pause the video to write them down. The four claims are fair trade. Remember, this means certain product ingredients were produced sustainably. Specifically, Ben & Jerry's used fair trade sugar, cocoa, and vanilla in this ice cream. The next claims are non-GMO, cage-free, and happy cows. So according to their website, cows are not treated with RBGH and are humanely raised, but we want you to know that there is no specific definition of the term humanely raised. So our takeaway messages today is that there are countless claims on today's food labels. Food label claims can be misleading. Many claims don't have a universally accepted definition. Not all food label claims are actually regula regulated and foods containing these label claims aren't necessarily better. Okay, so we want to thank you for attending this class, and the next few slides are just resources that we used for this presentation. We use direct education classes to teach many Delawareans, but we also are very active on different social media platforms. So please feel free to follow us and to like what we are doing on our Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube pages.